Paul Olsen's family has been growing potatoes and dairying in Manawatu for many years. When Paul and his brother Sean took over the family farms, they doubled the business within a few years. Along the way, Paul has become involved with the Young Farmer Organisation and has travelled overseas to study various farming systems with the help of Kellogg and Nuffield scholarships. We're farming about 505 hectares. We're milking 750 range season cows and grow sort of 200 acres of potatoes. My uncle and father set the business up in about 1977, um, along with my mother. Um, my father died um, later in um, 87, so um, my mother and uncle carried on the business, um, where my younger brother Sean and myself are lucky enough to sort of carry it on today. Very much dairy and potatoes all the way through, so no change to the business, but we have expanded the cow numbers. In 2004, when Sean and I both returned home, we put a new dairy on. It's a 60 bar oak tree there to make things a bit more user friendly, if you like. Half the farm here on the home farm is silt and half is peat. Silt's, you know, great summer safe stuff, but can get a bit winter wet. Uh, whether the peat is pretty much good all, all year round, but yeah, can dry out again in the summer. Gets all right, apart from probably the last, possibly the last couple of summers, but yeah, normally sort of a thousand, twelve hundred mils a year, so we're pretty lucky. I found an appetite for young farmers when I was sort of returned home from uni. Um, you could say the social scene was pretty pretty quiet around here, so I, I, I sort of, you know, took it with both hands and got into young farmers. Taking on certain leadership roles, especially at a local level, I suppose gave me an appetite to expand and, um, and go to greater things. I mean, obviously onto president of young farmers for a couple of years um, in 2011. Um, from there, I've sort of just, yeah, I suppose I sort of keep striving and, um, and, and wanting, wanting a little bit more, and that sort of pushed me on to Kellogg and Nuffield. But I um, very much, yeah, never, never planned it, and yeah, time's always been quite tight. I, I guess I've, I've tried to do these other things, I've still been pretty hands on in the business um, and run the day to day operations. I guess the value for Nuffield for me is it's given me a platform to not only build national and international networks, but also sort of being able to go hands-on into these people's operations around the world, you know, especially the UK and that great potato operations and actually sort of see how they do succeed, you know, what consequences I've had along the way and, and how they've overcome them. So very much learning off the best. You know, I'm a pretty firm believer success breeds success and, and I think that's been the key for me. I think we do punch well above our weight in New Zealand. I guess just overseas, because of the, the, the environmental regulation and, all, you know, and, and that sort of local local regulation that's coming and we we probably do have it still pretty easily and that's sort of probably what I was really trying to trying to follow as well is, is see where we're headed um, you know what's around the corner for us as an industry in the UK they've got a three crop policy where they've got to have a rotation of at least the three crops and I think that's possibly something where we're going to have to head sooner or later we just can't carry on cropping and, um, and doing the same old thing on our land you know we do need to be you know good ambassadors of, I suppose, of the soil and of the industry. Looking further ahead, I think we will face some barriers against chemical. Um, overseas, I see a lot of, um, you know, taking slug baits, for example, off, you know, really toxic slug baits off the market. And I believe that's what will follow suit here, um, long term, and, and other sort of insecticides, etc. as well. So here we're just seven k's from my home block, just at the foothills here. Sort of a little bit elevated here, but some quite good kiwi to silk soils. We've been growing early spuds up here for three years. I was trying to spread the workload of growing potatoes, but also just keep busy um, and also cash flow, obviously. So we've got more of a sort of a 365 day sort of work and cash flow for the potato business. So the opportunity to grow the early crop potatoes is, is just get some into those local markets, while others are sort of, um, especially in, in the Opiki area, are main, only main crop growers. So this uh, allows a little window to, to get a few spuds locally, and also um, we will export a few as well. The variety here is Moonlight, but we have up here also Island Hardies and Agria, which will be a great local market potato as well. These buds are looking great. They're probably sort of six or seven weeks away from harvest, so they'll make some good size and they'll be yeah, great for a local market. Through my travels, looking at potatoes, it's probably more of a shift to sort of be organic as possible. Um, obviously we do need to use insecticides and herbicides as a tool, but I think we just need to reach the threshold before we are just blanket spraying everything as we've probably previously done. 
the impact still it's had on, especially recent years, has, has been dramatic. When it first came in, we were pretty hard hit. Um, there was massive implications, I guess you could say. We've got a bit of data built up with it. We've been able to you know, use insecticides. Once we reach a certain threshold, I mean, it's been a lot more effective. Yeah. post solid uh, I guess the monitoring and the, and, the, and the agronomy side of things, we're using fruit food supplies and they are they're monitoring the crop every week. So on a Monday morning they'll come and walk the crop, replace traps, and I guess it's just knowing that this is going to be done consistently. You know, they've got a good eye for it, they're going around a lot of crops. We're actually using that as a tool to reach a threshold of psyllid or, or insects and then blanket spray as a result. Can't see any psyllid yet. No, that's great. It's the last one we want really at this yeah. time of the year. That temperature's probably been a bit cold pretty early for it. Yeah. Historically, we've got the, the likes of you know your blight and your moths and, st and, and that sort of thing, but we weren't so reliant on insecticides as such. Definitely now, with the presence of psyllid, we've actually had to be a lot more aggressive and I guess sort of you know finger on the pulse, if you like, as a result. FAR is now doing all the R&D work for Potatoes New Zealand um, and, from, from, in my opinion, doing a great job. Um, it's a great fit. Um, so, I'm, yeah, this year I'm actually looking at a sort of a soil-borne disease um, trial. Um, they come in and they sort of um, GPS a plot. Um, they'll take a soil sample away from that, um, look at sort of pathogens, soil-borne diseases within that, um, that area, and then as a result, come back and sort of look at any implications that's you know, gonna be present. This program was made with funding from New Zealand On Air.